What is happening people and welcome to the Scarface Personal YouTube channel for another video. It's transfer window season so today I yeah, reached out to YouTubers, content creators, some Spurs fans, some not just from other clubs getting their thoughts uh, on Conor Gallagher and whether he'd be a good signing or not for Spurs this summer. So that is the question I put to the wonderful YouTubers featured in today's video. So I do hope you enjoy. Stay tuned to the end and if you're new don't forget to smash the subscribe button. Enjoy. Should Conor Gallagher go to Tottenham or will Chelsea surprisingly keep him? Well, it's a really interesting question for me because obviously we're expecting him to be able to leave Chelsea because they need to sell to be able to invest before financial fair play comes into, into the aspect of Chelsea's transfers, outgoings, etc. Tottenham, they can have a really good player on their hands here. We all know what Gallagher's done. He's been the captain, which shows he's a good leader, which Tottenham do lack at times. I think Human Son is obviously the captain, uh, and I think he's been the captain because um, Kane left, and uh, not Kane left, sorry, Lloris left. And I think with, with Son being captain... I get it, he's the captain because he's a good player. Um and you've got Gallagher there, he's an English player, and obviously clubs need to have a certain amount of English players to be able to register for the Premier League season, and he's a good player to have, and it's really hard to find decent players who are English for such cheap, um, and I think it's about £40 million they're going to spend on him if Tottenham would like to get him. I think yes, I think Tottenham have had their, their problems with the, with the midfield. Benton has been injured for nearly a season. Um, Saar's been injured a few times. Hoiberg's obviously been injured, and he's going. So yeah, I would definitely, uh, if I was a Tottenham fan, I'd definitely want to see someone like um, Conor Gallagher there. He's creative, he's defensive, he can play anywhere in the midfield and it's really, really great, again, to have an English player in a team for a club uh, like Tottenham, who obviously need to get more English players in to be able to register them for the upcoming Premier League campaign, because you don't really want a lot of youth players registered unless they're decent enough, like Jamie Donnelly's been mentioned a few times. Yes, is the short answer. I would go, definitely go ahead, if I was a Tottenham fan, Mr Daniel Levy, I'm supposed to call glue, I'd go ahead and sign the main man himself, Conor Gallagher. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Good afternoon, you lovely people. I hope that you're all having a ruddy good day. Harry Scarf has kindly asked me to do a video giving my thoughts and opinions on the Colin Gallagher links to Tottenham Hotspur. And do I think he would be a good player for Spurs or not? Personally, I really highly rate Conor Gallagher. I think he's been fantastic for Chelsea, especially in the last season. And the fact that Maurizio Pochettino's departure had something to do with how much he wanted to keep Conor Gallagher, it really shows how good he's been. He comes across as quite a natural leader, very solid central midfielder, creative, can also do the defensive work very well. But in my opinion, there's three positions we need to strengthen in before we start looking at wing backs and central midfielders and attacking midfielders. And those three positions for me are DM, winger and number nine. I believe we need a real anchor man in there. Someone like a Victor Wanyama that we had years ago or a Moussa Dembele, you know, a DM with a bit of muscle, a bit of strength, sort of a deep lying playmaker as well. I believe we need a skillful and technical winger who will beat his man more times than a Timo Werner or Brennan Johnson on that right or left wing. And I believe we need a number nine. The amount of times last season that good crosses or good balls were put into the box and we didn't have that out and out striker in the team to finish them. And Alexander Izak, Dominic Solanke, those types of players as a number nine, I think would be great for Spurs. If we go out there and get a DM, get a winger, get a number nine who can come in and do a great job and make a huge impact at Spurs then, I'll be happy as Larry if we sign Conor Gallagher because I think he's a really good player. But in my opinion, there's priorities that need to be ahead of signing Conor Gallagher this summer. I can see why Spurs might want to get this deal done. Chelsea, obviously, they need to sell players this summer, especially if they're going to spend even more so that they're not in not in breach of financial fair play and they don't get points deducted or even relegated. So, Conor Gallagher, Trevor Chalibur, those types of players, that homegrown money, I think they'll be really trying to sell them this summer. And knowing the type of businessman Daniel Levy will be, he'll try and negotiate cleverly with this one. And it could work in our favour. Conor Gallagher's price tag, I believe, is 45 to 50 million. I wouldn't be surprised if we go in for him and Daniel Levy gets down to 30 million because of how desperate Chelsea will be to sell him. So look, Conor Gallagher, it should be interesting to see what happens this summer. I think we will sign him. I'll be honest with you guys. I think we will sign him. But do I want Spurs to sign him right now at this moment? No, I think there's other players that need to come in first and make an impact in the team and other positions that we need to strengthen in. But look, Harry, thank you for having me on. Big up to everyone else doing videos and everyone in the comment section down below. This community is fantastic. Take care of yourselves. All the best. And as always, come on you Spurs. 
Gallagher to Tottenham Hotspur, do I think that would be a good signing? I think Gallagher's a decent player. I think he improves Tottenham. But I'm going to be honest, if I was Spurs, I'd avoid that. I'd save you money. I think he's not the quite profile of midfielder you need. Yes, he's a good player for a good price, homegrown, but you need an out-and-out out six, in my opinion, a Matt Sweefer, a Yusuf Afala type player. Even Edison of Atalanta would be a better fit, in my opinion. I think you also need a striker like Benjamin Sesco, and then potentially another winger like Sule is doing quite well. Juventus apparently could sell him for 25 million. If I'm Tottenham, I'm looking at a winger, I'm looking at a striker, I'm looking at a six. Gallagher, yeah, he's a good player, but I don't think it's really worth Tottenham spending the money on Gallagher. If they sign him, I don't think it's a bad signing. I don't think it's a bad signing at all. But I think value for money, they could do a bit better in the window. Hey, this is Harry from Hasbro TV, um, back for another video. So um, Harry Scott has asked me to do a, an opinion on Conor Gallagher to Tottenham. Um, what I think about him as a player, I'm going to that. And whether I want to come to Tottenham, whether he improves us, I guess just my opinion in general, Harry asked me. So here's the video. Um, so first of all, Conor Gallagher, I do think he's liked to come to Tottenham. Um, I think because he's homegrown, cause Spurs are clearly trying to fill a homegrown quota in some sort, and especially with Skip being linked on the way out. Um, and do I think he's good enough for Spurs? Well, he does improve us ish, ish. <laughs> I say ish because it's not a massive upgrade. Um, I know Hybo's on his way out as well, um, but to me, it kind of shows Andrew's choices in terms of um, he doesn't really want a traditional number six that I want, like a Paulinia, like an old-school Makaleli type, like a Wanyama back in the day at Tottenham. He kind of wants two eights and a ten, which is what a lot of people have told me before, that Gallagher will fit the, the kind of Andrew mould because he is young, he's he's not fast, as he's got stamina, I guess. Um, he'll run up the pitch, he'll put in a shift. He's not exactly a classic number six, I'd, I'd say. Um, but I do think Andrew wants him. Um, do I want him myself? No. As I alluded to just now, I want a traditional number six. So I'm not keen on Gallagher at all. I'd go and spend money on Paulinia. Maybe not him exactly, because I do to do with Mendy around, um, players like that. Just a really proper number six, because I'd adjust Andrew's system and put like a number six screening in front of, um, obviously, like a triangle sort of thing, um, in front of, obviously, um, Van der Ven and Romero, because they're the two that kind of drop back, and I'd have the DM on the halfway line. Now, will Gallagher do this at Tottenham if he comes in? No, I do not think so, because I alluded to earlier, two eights and a ten. Um, so, again, I think Gallagher will just kind of fit, fill Bissouma's position, or even Saar's position more than likely, if he rests them, or especially with Europe coming up. Um, do I think he's going to be like good for us? I think he'll probably do all right. But in my personal opinion, I'm on the illusion, on the illusion, of the opinion that we should spend all our money on a front front line. Um, and either a number six or I get Bramfrey at Everton. So I'd kind of be happy with keeping him if it was where you have just for this season. Um, and if he really wants to finish the centre half, go get Bramfrey at Everton. Go and get three top class attackers, um, not Werner, that's already done, unfortunately. Um, so for me, in the overall Gallagher says Spurs, I'm not keen on it, but I think it's probably going to happen. And he does improve us, but enough to change the title, no, not for me. Um, we do well under Ange, well, like I said, he's an Ange player, as, as an Ange type player. Um, and he'll just use him as like an eight in his two eights and a ten in the midfield. And I think he'll probably do all right. Um, but, no, like I said, I'm not that keen on him. I think he plays his best football as number 10 at Palace. I don't think he'll be using that position at Spurs. I'll be quite surprised. Especially with the Eze links as well. Um, so yeah, Gallagher to Spurs. Yes to, for it to happen and no for me wanting it. So Connor Gallagher, one of the biggest talking points of Spurs' is transfer window. And I'm sure that will carry on. Should we get him or should we not? I'm not sure where he fits into our midfield in terms of whether he's a number 10 like a Madison, a box-to-box -box like a Saar or a Bentoncourt holding midfielder like a Hoiberg or a combination of all of those like a Basuma, but it would offer competition for places and we were top of the league November last year with every one of our players fit and playing well. Uh, obviously the lack of a squad depth uh, was what cost us kind of in the end with the injuries. Uh, he would add to that with certainly in that midfield with a lot more squad depth. He's a player that Poch put as captain. You don't put a captain 
You don't give a captaincy to someone who can't handle responsibility. So obviously Poch sees him as a responsible player and a leader. And we you can never have too many leaders. Uh, he's obviously played for Chelsea as well. So that's a big team that he's played for. He's out of contract as well at the end of next summer. And there seems to be a stalemate. That's part of the reason why Poch was fired, if you believe these reports. Uh, so there could be a cut price. If you said 60 million for him, I'm not sure I'd take that. But if it was 30, 35, I think I probably would. And then there's the be all or end all for me. Does Ange want him? If Ange wants him, you go get him. Unless Chelsea are saying 200 million or something absolutely ludicrous. Uh, if Ange wants him, you go get him. So if Ange wants him, we should get him. Well, Harry asked us to do a little uh, a little video on the sign, potential sign of Colin Gallagher and what I think. Um, for me, I just think it'd be a fantastic signing for Spurs. Um, really gets on the ball, makes things tick as well. He's, he's very an aggressive uh, footballer. Likes to play on the front foot. Loves a good tackle. Um, never gives up, and that's what I think you need in a footballer. Now, it's the blend. What 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 attracts me to that good signing, which will be obviously Madison just in front of him. Fantastic brain. Uh, in, in that number 10 area but if you've got that security of, of Conor Gallagher behind you um, getting about the park just just being a real workhorse in there I just think it'll be a fantastic sign if it comes off I think you'll have an absolute gem on your hands uh, for me it's a definite yes be a great player I hope that's alright for you Harry top man for me, the biggest pro of Conor Gallagher is his versatility, which you're going to need to have in this iron system. It's a system that relies on a player who can play so many positions. He could play the 6, he could play the 8, and even at times he played the 10. Um, obviously not really having much success there. A player who's been one of Chelsea's best players this season, captain them for most of the season, and other than Conor Gallagher, was really a fan favourite. And also, on top of that, um, you know, he's got so much experience being 24 years of old, playing for England, getting multiple loans out there, and being a real leader into that Chelsea dressing room. His biggest pro for me is how much he runs. I mean, that's something that we really miss in our midfield. Bissouma is a great player technically, but he doesn't really run that much for a six, and that is his biggest problem. And if you add that in with his technical ability, I think he could really flourish under Ange. Obviously, the... Then going on to the cons, for me, um, he could potentially be a bit too expensive for a player who, in my opinion, I would love to see only as a backup. As, look, we don't want to do the Levy thing and get him being in the salsa. I don't really want to see that. But if he can be a rotation option, I think he can be a valuable, brilliant player that can add a lot to our game. And overall, I probably would definitely get him. We can get him 40 million and on top of that, get a proper six, like a player like Onana or Edison we were linked with uh, last year. It could be a really, really great piece of business. And uh, thank you for Harry Scarf. And uh, go subscribe to him. What are you doing? Hey, people. It is Marlon from Spurs Kings TV. And a quick little video for Scarfleet Spurs Talks. So he's asked me the question. Should Spurs sign Connor Gallagher? Well... <sighs> It's a mix. It's a mixed one for me. Um, if you'd asked me back in January, I'd have said no. Um, I think the stat was he'd done the most running, he'd done all this, he'd done all that, but he had one assist and one goal at the time. He did finish on five goals and seven assists for the season. So the second half of the season, once you know, because I, I thought Cole Palmer was kind of keeping Chelsea afloat, and I thought you know. With Conor Gallagher, I believe his best position is in the same position that Madison plays, which is behind the forward line, but he weren't really playing that role for Chelsea. Um, and I was kind of mixed. I, I still have mixed feelings about it. Now, if you compare him to Pape Matesa this season, where he's got three goals and three assists, and then you compare it to um, Benson Cor, who's got one goal and assist, you're probably looking at going, you know what? It makes perfect sense for him to be in that position. Um, especially when he had someone like um, Nicholas Jackson he was setting up. So I can kind of see that scenario. But he, then, he did have also Carl Palmer, who was literally lighting up Chelsea last this season as well. Um, would he suit Spurs? Yes. But is he another one of those players where he's only good for six months and he's not great for the other six months? I don't know. Look, when I watch Conor Gadigar, I feel like he kind of gives the ball away a lot. Um, he misplaces a lot of passes, but also at the same time, he wins a lot of balls back. He's very tenacious. You know, he's a very, 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 he's a very good player. 
But do we have too many midfielders like him? And when I say too many midfielders, you know, you got like I'm comparing him to Saar and Bentacor because those, those are the two players that mostly played in that position this season. And even Basuma, you know, if you put Basuma in that position and you're going to get the same output, probably not with goals and assists because, you know, Conor Gallagher did, did end up with a good assist account record at the end. But then I like to look at his time at Crystal Palace. Yeah, his time at Crystal Palace, I thought, was a bit more successful. Um, and he played 34 matches, 8 goals, 3 assists, 10 yellow cards. And that's when he was playing behind. But then, is that better than James Madison? Where James Madison, you know, scored 4 goals, 9 assists this year. Um, look, our English quote was crap, right? Which is not surprising. This is Spurs. Um, so, you know, our homegrown. I shouldn't say, yeah, you know, it's not great. Um, so we are looking, we are looking for a homegrown sort of player. Whether Conor Gallagher wants to come to Spurs is another question. You know, we are Chelsea, you know, Chelsea hates Spurs. Apparently he's, he's family rule Chelsea. He's Chelsea. Um, so it'd be quite interesting on that front, whether he'd even want to contemplate coming to Spurs. You know, Spurs and Chelsea, what it was three points in it last season and Chelsea were on a bad season and Spurs were having a great season. What, what, what some Spurs were saying, well, a great season under Ange for his first season. So you have to ask your question. They've now lost their manager in Poch. You know, are Chelsea on the up? They're just about to sign Maresca as well. Um, so it's down to Conor Gallagher, really. Look, I'm not saying I wouldn't sign him. You know, now that we've got Timo Werner, which we won't talk about, you know, someone like Conor Gallagher may be needed now. Um, it's just trying to find out what, what Spurs are trying to do. If, you know, if it is Eze or not. Spurs need a forward. They need an attacker. They need a striker, a main, main, main man at top. But, you know, that could be between Sun, Kulu and, um, Richarlison next year. So, uh, would I sign Conor Gallagher? Um, uh, with knowing, you know, knowing what we're trying to sign, I probably would now. I have changed my mind on it. Um, but is he the signing that I'd be happy about? I, you know what? It is what it is. It's, it's Spurs signing. We need a homegrown and, you know, as long as it don't take much out of the budget, which it probably will, you know, if I was Conor Gallagher and I was looking at seeing how much Werner was earning, I'd be like, well, I'm going to have a better impact than that. So, yeah, for me, I'd probably sign him now. Um, I, you know, with all football opinions, we do change, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I would sign Conor Gallagher. Um, but that's just because I don't think we will get any better. Um, than Conor Gallagher. There's probably better players out there, you know, but it is what it is, but no. If he was to come here, support him, but I don't think he wants to come to Spurs anyway, so let's see. What's going on, people? Hope you're well. I'm Wilsey, and you may know me as the guy who does donuts on social media, and I've been asked by Harry to give you my thoughts on whether we should be signing Conor Gallagher or not from Chelsea. And I'm going to give you this answer straight as I can. Absolutely not. The main reason why I don't think we should be signing Gallagher is that we're going to be helping Chelsea with whatever financial problems they got themselves in at the minute. If we give Chelsea, let's say, was it 30, 40 million for Gallagher, um, they'll, they're able to um, pay their players, they're able to buy new players, they're able to pay their staff, and as direct rivals to Chelsea, I don't think we should be letting this happen, you know? Um, there's obviously better options in the midfield. I'm not very tactically minded, so I couldn't tell you an option right now. But I'm sure we can sign a better player at a better price that doesn't directly help our um, local rivals, you know what I'm saying? And another reason why I don't think we should be signing Gallagher again is that he's a Chelsea boy, you know? He's, um, he's a boy that has been brought up around a club that we we don't like and by him coming into the club I think that goes against everything we stand for as Spurs letting um, Gallagher into the club won't be good business in that department and I, and I just don't think we should be letting it happen um, also if you've seen any of the podcasts I've been doing with Harry you'll know that I'm not very tactically minded as I, as I just said so I can't give you my opinion on what um, Gallagher will provide for the club. But as a Spurs fan who's seen the club go all sort, through all sorts of things, thick and thin, we shouldn't be letting this happen and we sh definitely shouldn't be signing Gallagher. I did see um, a report saying that Gallagher wants to stay at Chelsea and that he wants to work and develop his future around Chelsea. 
if he wants to do that, then good luck to him. Uh, that's all I can say. I don't think he should be signing for Spurs. I hope you enjoyed listening to this. Sorry I did ramble on that a little bit, but I just thought I'd give you my full opinion on it. Hope you guys have a great week and take care. Yes, people, it's your boy Ash Mag. Big up Harry Scarfy for this uh, video. We're going to talk about Conor Gallagher. We're linked with him. I'm going to say it straight. Will he work in the Ange system? Possibly. Um, is he my preference? No, I think there's better midfielders out there. I describe him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. What he's not is a DM. He's not someone that can play in the, the double pivot. And he's not an elite 10, if that makes sense. Um, so for me, I'll just go through shooting, passing, dribbling, creativity, build-up phase, heading, and defensive responsibilities. And I'll start with the shooting. I think he takes long-range shots. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. He's not super elite at them, but he does take them. And that's something we needed, Spurs, taking shots from outside the box. Um, in, in, in terms of inside the box, he takes a lot of touches inside the penalty area and he gets his shot off. He able to, you know, shape his body to kind of hit the ball first time. And he runs into the box real late and he sees the space and then he attacks it and he ends up finishing goals. And that's the reason why he's got five goals in the league and I'm sure he's got more in the cups combined. So more than any, um, some of our midfielders anyway in that position. I think in terms of passing, um, he has got a range of passing. However, he's only useful in the final third, I feel like. In the defensive third, he's not good at decision making and sometimes forces the Hollywood pass. In terms of dribbling, I think he uses his body well and he uses his dribbling attributes best in the channels and he kind of uses his strength to lean on players. Um, he's that type of player. He's not a person that gets on a half turn to beat a man or he's not someone that can use his shoulder to, you know, shimmy past a player. He's not that type of, uh, dribbler. But, um, again, sometimes he gets caught out in that final third if he's trying to dribble when he's pressed he's not really press resistant creativity wise i think um he can spot a pass so when he's higher up the pitch you can see the, the pitch better um he can pass in between the lines as well so you can find players that way as well and he can switch to play balls over the top what's not so good about his creativity is his weight of pass is quite inconsistent at times when we go into actual build up his build-up needs to be worked on. He's a person that he hasn't got his body shape right, so sometimes he stands his back to goal, which forces you to pass back to you where it came from, your centre-back or your goalkeeper, or into your full-back sideways. So when he's higher up the pitch, that's when he can um, you know, be, be a bit more assertive, but he's not someone that's going to progress the ball. He's not going to be someone that gets on the ball and wants it and pushes up forward. I'm not saying he goes hiding, but he's not that person. Um, a, a bit like we know what we experienced with Hoiberg and Skip. He's that kind of type of player. Um, in terms of heading, he's um, not the best defensively. Sometimes he makes the wrong decision and can crowd out his teammates when he's going for headers so he needs to work on that and then also if it's a 50 50 sometimes he loses those jewels um, he needs to work on being more commanding when it comes to header and be a bit more assertive defensively like talk about that quickly in terms of defending um, sometimes he reads the play a little bit wrong can like misjudge tackles lunging is a bit erratic so defensive numbers if you look at it statistically aren't great and that's the reason why but in terms of winning the ball high up I think this is where Ange wants him um, in terms of pressing, energy, tackling, winning the ball there in those positions. He does that. I saw that against Spurs when we watched it, when I watched it live. He really was um, helping his team to get up the pitch really high up. Spurs are really known for high turnovers. And I think that's where he suits Spurs, his aggression, his um, endurance, his mobility, his, his, his box to box presence, getting up and down. That's the type of profile player I think he is. Um, I hope that's answered your question, Scarfy. I've gone on longer than I should have. But if you want more in depth, go into the Spurs Kings TV. I'll cover it a lot more. Peace, love, and thank you once again. Come on, you Spurs. Morning, Harry. It's John Mir. I hope you're well. And it's a garden called Gallica. And should Spurs should be signing them or not? He's been linked to you guys for quite a while. And um, Ange seems to like him. For me, I'll say yes. I think you should sign him. I think it'll fit him well in the anti system and I think he'd be brilliant for you so yes I say go and get him and yeah just go for it man I mean he's not going to leave London in my opinion so go and get him I think he's a really good player scores scores makes things happen you do everything in midfield so 
get them in, mate. 50 million for a player like Gallagher, in my opinion, is quite a lot, but you have to spend big to win big. So I would take him at Spurs. Uh, when I've watched him, I think he's shown good leadership qualities. He's definitely shown that throughout the season at Chelsea. Um, and obviously, we all know the reason for his price tag being so much is, you know, Chelsea tax and English tax. But the amount we've been linked with him, I think it's fair to say that Postacoglu is definitely a big fan of his. So why not? Yes, yes, people. It's me, RS from RS6 Football. Um, just a quick video. Obviously, Harry's asked me to do this. Um, we'll be responding to him whether if Tottenham should sign Conor Gallagher. Obviously, he's been linked with a move to obviously Tottenham and Aston Villa as well. In my opinion, what I think of him, I think he's decent. Um, whether if he should sign for Spurs, probably because he adds depth to that team and I love, and I think that he can start as well. So and it's good to have competition out there. So yeah, why not? I don't see why not. Tottenham should sign. Him. Quick video for Harry Scarf. Uh, who's asked the question, should Spurs sign Conor Gallagher? For me, the answer is no. And the reason is, I don't think he's a bad player, but I don't think he's a great player. I think he's okay. And I'm craving for Spurs to show ambition. I'm dying for Spurs to demand glory and be the best we can be to win trophies. And I don't see Conor Gallagher as someone that elevates us to that level. Just sounds like another squad player, another backup that doesn't come off the bench and have this amazing impact that we need if we're going to be ambitious and actually be the club that I'd like to see us become. Um, or be again, because we used to be that club a long, long time ago. So... When you look at the midfield, is he much better than what we've got? It's, it's highly debatable. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of backups or players that are just deemed as squad players. I want players that are going to come and challenge for first team places, raise the levels, be better than what we've got. And I just think he's that middle of the road player. Just meh. So for me, it's a no. I, I I want to see much better than Conor Gallagher signing for Spurs. Make sure you like and subscribe to Harry's channel. All right, folks. Should Tottenham sign Conor Gallagher? Yes, no, and give your reasons. I'm going to give my final verdict at the end of this video. It's your boy in Tune Tactics, and I've been asked by Harry Scarf to give you guys my view on the potential signing of, of Conor Gallagher. And I'm gonna I'm gonna break down this before giving you guys my answer on this. I'm gonna break down this video into three parts so you guys understand where I'm coming from. Number one, in order to be able to answer this question, is is to understand how Tottenham play. Now, because you guys are Tottenham fans, I'm not gonna go into great de detail about how you guys play. You guys watch your team more than anybody else, so I'm not gonna do that in great detail. Uh, but I am going to explain it in to understand a little bit more where Conor Gallagher will fit into your system. Number two, how does Conor Gallagher play? And understanding his player profile. Then number three, merge number one and two together. Where would Conor Gallagher fit into your system? What does Ange Postecoglou see? That's what it comes down to. Because he wants to he wants to convince Levy to spend the big bucks on Conor Gallagher. So what does Ange Postecoglou see that would fit into your system? So, number one, how do Tottenham play? Now, on paper, you guys are 4-3-3. But we all know with your inverted fullbacks, left and right back, you end up being a 2-3-4-1. So you overload the central areas and that's how you dominate your that's how you end up dominating the central of midfield, getting up the field really quickly, and you you give yourselves the options, especially up front, for your by pushing up your central midfielders. You can give your your wide, your full your your, your uh, left wing forwards and right wing forwards, forwards the options of either narrowing in, in the attack or going out wide themselves. So you give a lot of options. So you, you have that real free-flowing, fluid football going on in your games. Now, the position that I think 
we're going to be looking at in terms of uh, where Conor Gallagher, where, um, Conor Gallagher will play in his player profile is that central midfield area where Ishmael Saar plays. Now, what Ishmael Saar does in your in your team, as you guys will know, he is that box-to-box -box midfielder. He comes in crashing in late. Sometimes he will pick up the ball. He, he's, he's there to kind of support Madison. Uh, the likes of Madison, your creative players, your creative fullback. So your actual creative players are your fullback. So uh, uh, Pedro Poro, Udogi, they'll come in, they'll help help out with the first phase of of of, of the game of of the of, of the game um, in the build up. Besuma playing in that pivot in between the the fullbacks themselves picking up the ball, whilst the central midfielders, Ishmael Saar, would either. Um, coming on the on on that right side, creating a, creating a diamond. Oh, things are falling over. Creating a diamond with your fullbacks and your midfield in order to progress the full uh, ball forward. Or if you guys are dispossessed uh, um, whilst attacking, um, your he would also uh, run back and defend your flanks because you're obviously the way you guys play in terms of your fullbacks narrowing in. Your flanks are exposed, so therefore it's the duty of your of your of your central midfielders in Ishmael Saar in particular and, and Basuma. So Basuma would run back in in, in, in the middle of your centre backs, but in between Van der Ven and between Romero, who would then spread out wide, and Ishmael Saar would run on the right side in order to stop any progression uh, on 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 the flanks and the flank areas there. So that comes on to um, onto Conor Gallagher. As just explaining Ishmael Saar's role, you can, you can see where Conor Gallagher would excel. Energy, this is for Conor Gallagher, energy, work rate, box-to-box -box midfielder. He excels in these type of areas. So in your in your in terms of box-to-box, -box, running um, into the box, crashing into the box, excellent. Um, coming back, work rate, ensuring that your fullbacks are being protected and defended, excellent. The other thing that Conor Gallagher is good at in terms of your, again, going back into the forward areas, he's exceptional, at, he's very good at crossing. Very, I'm not going to go sectional, but he's very, very good at crossing and very, very good at actually scoring goals themselves. So he has that creativity as well as that clinicalness in the final end. The one area of weakness um, that, or, or, or it's, and it's quite an important area of weakness that Conor Gallagher has is he hates the well, he hates, but he's not. I'm not going to say he hates it. He's not very good at all in the build-up phase of the game. So when you guys, because you guys love building up from the back, essentially with Van der Ven, Rom, uh, Vicario, on Romero, whilst your full fullbacks push forward and Basuma will drop in in the pivot. Sometimes Ishmael Saar would also come in and support and provide that diamond, as explained earlier, so you can get the progress of the ball forward. Um, Gonagalic has a real a bad sense of um, spatial awareness, and um, he, ca if pressed, especially in that in that in that in that area of the pitch, he risks losing the ball. So, Ange Postecoglou already knows this. I know this. You guys know this. So, what's Ange Postecoglou saying? I think he's saying I back myself to either a teach Conor Gallagher um, more press resistance and how to play that, and B, teach him the Tottenham system and way, where he doesn't have to think too much about what he's going to do next when he gets that ball. So also, the third thing is where he's got to be when he gets that ball, where, where area of the pitch he's going to be at when you guys are building up of the phase, if he can if he can drill that down into Conor Gallagher, and he's backing the fact that Conor Gallagher has got that um, a can-do attitude, that energy about him to learn. He's backing himself to teach Conor Gallagher to be able to do that. And if Conor Gallagher does get that part of his game right, he becomes a, a really dynamic and exceptional player because he can do the other stuff that I explained er earlier, the work rate, the box-to-box -box stuff, the, the the crosses. He um, When he played for Crystal Palace, he, would, he, he was in charge of their set pieces. Um so he's got that, and he knows he's got that clinicalness in the final edge of the box. So if if if, if Ange can teach them the system, the system of how Tottenham plays, especially in the build-up phase, um, um, he then becomes a more complete and dynamic midfielder. And so that leads me on to the final part of this video, which is 
uh, essentially uh, what Ange Postacoglu sees in him. And I think he sees a good couple of things in the film. And we explained about this already. He, I think he sees a very good <coughs> area of competition for Ishmael Saar. Conor Gallagher versus Ishmael Saar. And they'll, be, uh, they'll both push each other in order to improve and get better. Because there's areas, as you guys know, Ishmael Saar can improve on. And we already talked about the weaknesses in the areas that Conor Gallagher can improve on. And having them to compete with, against each other would be fantastic. Um, Conor Gallagher's work rate, Conor Gallagher's creativity, Conor Gallagher's athleticism and pace and can-do attitude are all ac attractive things that Ange Postacoglu loves in his system. But is it only Conor Gallagher that can do those things? No. So, for instance, obviously, I'm a Newcastle fan. You guys can tell that. I'm going to compare Conor Gallagher to Tonali. Because Tonali and Conor Gallagher are not too dissimilar in profile. But this is where I think Tonali has the edge in a couple of areas against Conor Gallagher. I had to do um, the profile, the kind of some attributes for Tonali in the in the year season two, uh, before this one, because obviously the ban. But you can see that Conor Gallagher is very close to him in terms of attacking, just edges him. They both got good technical ability, though I think um, um, Tonali is better at Conor Gallagher technically, especially in the build-up phase. So um, Tonali can play in a six and eight role. So he could do the Basuma type role as well as do all the other stuff that we described earlier. And obviously you've got that creativity part. He's also exceptional at crossing, he's exceptional at finishing as well. All those areas that Conor Gallagher is good at. So this is what this is what points me back to what I was saying earlier. I think Ange Postacoglu, like you and I know, the weakness of Conor Gallagher, especially in the build-up phase, and he backs himself to be able to teach a Conor Gallagher those, th those areas by teaching him the system of, of Tottenham so he knows where Conor Gallagher knows where to pick up the ball uh, and when to pass it without thinking about it too much. I think, and obviously as a Newcastle fan, maybe I'd say this, he's trying to create a Tonali out of him. And I think he, there's every um, there's nothing to say that he can't do that, that he can't achieve that, um, in my view. So, should Tottenham sign Conor Gallagher? In my view, yes, you should. Now, the price is going to mean a lot. You know, uh, 50 million plus, I disagree with, but anything from 40 million downwards would be an excellent buy. So, yes, I back this signing. Let me know what you guys think. Um, until next time, take care and God bless, folks. So, Harry, do I think that Conor Gallagher would be a good signing? Um, would he be my first choice? Absolutely not. Um, obviously, Eze above him. Um, in fact, I wanted Adam Walton. Not that I thought uh, Walton would be uh, this far advanced in his career. But do I think that Gallagher would suit Ange Ball? I do. Um, brilliant off the ball in in the press and leading the press um, and that's where his strengths lie um, is that 100% what we need right now probably what Ange needs right now but us Spurs fans you know I think we want a six and uh, an exciting game changer like Eze um, or some of the other players striker and other backup players um, but Ange has got the hots for him so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he arrives, but as usual, no doubt, other teams are doing the business. We don't, they don't talk about it, they do it. We talk about signings for a year, Jack Grealish, many others, the list is endless that we've not signed. So my thought is he'll either stay where he is or he'll end up at uh, Villa, but not us. And if he does come to us, Andrew will be happy, probably dancing up and down. Uh, but not for me at this moment but it'll probably be good for us and that's about it sounds like a mass of contradictions to me he's a very good player I think he would definitely improve Spurs I mean you look at Angie what he's done in this first season I think he's definitely improved the team so I think adding him um, adding that player in the team would definitely help Spurs again next season get even better so yeah I think it would be a really good signing but I don't know if it would happen Hey Harry it's Sonny here from Sonny Talk Spurs and the Connor Gallagher conundrum which is what I've been calling it for a about what 12 months now we've been linked to him and I don't know how I feel about it because at the end of the day 
he's an all right player. Like not all right, that sounds harsh, but he's good. But is he the player to take Spurs to the next level? You know, he's been all right in a Chelsea team, which has got two hundred million pound players in it. But could Ange improve him to that next level? I think the jury's out about this one. I'm really not sure about Conor Gallagher. I'm just. I think for the money you're going to pay, and I know he's a homegrown talent, so it does help our quota, does it make sense? It would be funny to have one up on Chelsea, but I personally think there are better options on the market, even English players, instead of Conor Gallagher. And maybe we could look at different options, maybe put more money into an Eze. No, they're different players, but Conor Gallagher for 50-ish million and no goal contributions as such as many as we'd like. It's, it's, a, it's a weird one, but I'm not really all for it. Hello, Spurs fans. Uh, I've been asked to do a little video for Harry just about Conor Gallagher being linked with Spurs. Uh, I don't rate him. I really don't. I think Gallagher, I watched him at St. James's Park when we destroyed them 4-1 last season. He had a great chance to score. and He just he can't hit a barn door. And even if he gets it on target, he... he the keepers read him so easily where he's going. I'm just not a massive fan of him. I don't know what kind of player he wants to be either. Is he a defensive midfielder? Is he a box-to-box? Is he a number 10? What is he trying to be? Now, maybe I'm being overcritical. Uh, Ange might be able to get the best out of him. But personally, I think if you sign him, I think it's a very underwhelming signing and it just shows that you're not trying to move on to the next level, to be completely honest with you. Uh I wouldn't want him at Newcastle, so that says a lot. It, it, it would be an underwhelming signing for us. So, personally, I'd stay away. Uh, I hope you get him because it just shows the ambition maybe is, is not there as what I thought Tottenham would look to do next season. Still got a lot of that hurricane money to spend. But Conor Gallagher isn't the answer for me. Uh, but that's my thoughts. That's my opinions. Uh, let us know what you think. Thank you. Should Spurs sign Conor Gallagher from Chelsea this summer? It's the question that's on a lot of Spurs fans' lips right now, with the Chelsea midfielder heavily linked with a move to Spurs this summer. His contract situation at Chelsea is running down. Aston Villa also interested. But it seems as if Gallagher is happy to sit tight and wait at Chelsea, even if that new deal isn't going to arrive this summer. I put a video out on my own YouTube channel talking about the pros and the cons to signing Conor Gallagher, so I can go and give that a watch if you want, where I go into it into more detail. But if you're asking me for my immediate thoughts, I think I would probably quite like the signing. I do like Conor Gallagher. I think he's a much more all-rounder in terms of a midfielder than people are giving him credit for. I think he's very well-rounded. I think he's a good going forward. I think his defensive work rate is something that's impeccable. Such a great presser. He'd be perfect for our system. However, when you look at what we've already got and maybe what we need to upgrade in the squad, I don't think he should necessarily be a priority. But I would like the signing. We've got Pat Matasar, We've got Rodrigo Bentancourt who can play in those number eight positions. However, when you look at someone like Bentancourt, and as much as we all love him, he spent a lot of last season now injured. Again, that's not his fault, but Conor Gallagher is incredibly durable. Only four midfielders in the Premier League played more minutes than him last season. So he's got that work rate. He is that engine that Spurs need in midfield, really, over the course of a season, especially with Europa League football on the horizon. However, if you're looking to that midfield with Pierre Mohoibier seemingly on the way out this summer as well, Yves Basuma, our only real defensive midfielder, I think that's maybe where we should turn our attention to, whether that's someone like Jao Paulinha, whether that's someone like Edison who can play that six and that eight role, the guy at Atlanta, the Brazilian midfielder, or someone like a Mats Weifer, a younger midfielder who can play in that number six position to compete with Yves Basuma, because I still think going into next season, Basuma will be our starting number six. I really like what Gallagher's about. I do think he has quality in the final third, which a lot of people don't seem to. But I just think we could prioritise another signing ahead of someone like Conor Gallagher. But it would be quite nice to nick someone from Chelsea, someone who they see as one of their own. After years of them trying to pinch the likes of Luka Modric from Spurs, it would be nice to finally be able to do business with them and take someone who's captained them a hell of a lot over the course of the last season as well. They see him as one of their own. Uh, yeah. I'm in the middle. I'm somewhere in the middle. I'd be pro the signing, but I think we could prioritise other positions. It'd be interesting to see what other people think. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Spursy Talks. Back here with another video. Today, I'm doing a bit. There's something a bit different. I'm going to be reacting to if Conor Gallagher will be a good signing for Tottenham. Um, I just want to make a disclaimer before I go into this top topic. Conor Gallagher is a great player. We already has, have seen his quality last year at Chelsea, obviously on loan at Crystal Palace. So he is a good player. 
this is not me defining if he's a good player or a great player. I'm a bit half-hearted in if he's going to take us to the next level because for me, I feel like we do have players on a similar level to Conor Gallagher. Look, if Hoiberg was to go or La Celso was to leave or even Skip was to leave, yeah, we do need to replace these players. I just feel there's better midfielders on the market that can obviously do Conor Gallagher's role, you know? And... 100% obviously a lot of people are going to say there's room for improvement he's young he's English he's going to fit the English quota which is one of the biggest things why we're looking for an uh, English midfielder it's just I'm just a bit worried that we are not getting better players we are just getting like for like players and when I say like for like look his attributes are obviously better than Hoiberg but there's attributes that Hoiberg has that are better than Conor Gallagher. Do you get where I'm coming from? So, I don't think he's going to take us to the next level. However, he would be a, a decent signing in terms of what Angie's looking for, a number six. And we, we, we've been saying this all season. We need number six, you know. Someone that's going to obviously um, help out with the attack and also be a hard worker. And Conor Gallagher is a hard worker. Look, for the money that Chelsea's going to want for him, and obviously it's not going to be a cheap signing because we're looking to pay maybe 50 to 60 million. And we're going to help Chelsea in their pursuit of um, June Al Al um, Alvarez from Man City. It just feels like it's, it's going to be a bad signing. And I generally feel like there's better midfielders that can obviously do his role. Now, the stats have shown that he's hard working, he's good on the ball and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't really um, make that many mistakes. It's just I'm really concerned in the quality. It's about the quality that's coming to Tottenham. And when I want a signing to come in, I want us to get better all over the pitch, you know? And it goes back down to the point I made. Yes, he's a great sign. He he would be a great signing, or he would be a good signing. It's just he it doesn't make us massively better. Like if I was to give you an example, Declan Rice, put him in Arsenal, makes him a great team. Do you see what I'm trying to say? And you've got other players across the board. You know, you place, you take one person out and you bring put one person in. It makes a big improvement. I just don't think Conor Gallagher's that guy. It'll be interesting to see if he was to come to Tottenham and look. Honestly, I have no hate for Con Conor Gallagher. I think he's a, a good sportsman. Obviously, he plays for Chelsea, so there's going to be obviously that factor of he's been playing for the uh, playing for the Ops, and now you're going to obviously want him to do the same thing that he's done for the Ops. And he's also made it clear that he doesn't really want to move. So who knows man I'm just it's just a short video just uh, for, from my perspective I think he's a great player and even if he was to come in it would be interesting um what do you guys think like and subscribe Peace. Hey Harry, so you asked me my opinion on potentially signing Connor Gallagher. So I had recently seen the, uh, the rumours about us potentially signing him for 50 million. Now, first off, I don't think he's worth that much. I think 50 million is quite a lot. I think he's maybe worth around the 30, 35 million mark, potentially. That might be still stretching it a bit. Now, in terms of him as a player, I'd say he's decent. I wouldn't say he's like a wow factor, like, oh my God, we need to get him. Um, I think that he's hitting the decent mark. He's okay. Like he has his decent games. He's had his decent games playing with, with Chelsea. Um, but he's also had his games where he's invisible. Or he's not really doing much. Um, but in terms of him coming into our team, I mean, if Ange sees something in him and Ange says, OK, like, I want him, then Ange clearly sees something and he clearly sees him potentially fitting into the system. So we've got to kind of give Ange a chance and an opportunity to bring him in and see what he does with him, because we're not going to know how he's like. We're not going to know if he's going to be fantastic or not until he actually steps foot on that pitch and plays for our team. So if Ange does see something in him, then we've just got to back him. So it might be a case that bring him in, 
see what he does. It might be assigning Rich's quality and it might give us the shock of our lives or it might be the complete opposite and he's just a waste of space. Who knows? But I think if Ange has full confidence and he genuinely says, I want Conor Gallagher, Conor Gallagher then just bring him in and let's, let's see what he does. Um, but I think... I wouldn't say I'm, yes, like, let's bring him in. I'd say let's wait, let's see, because there are other quality players that we can get in. And like I said, I think we've just got to back Ange. And if Ange wants him, we've got to accept that and we've just got to move past. So if it is a case that we sign him, we've just got to see how he does fit into our system and then go from there. But yeah. I've been asking my opinion on whether or not Tottenham should sign Conor Gallagher. I'm David from the David F Spurs FM channel. Um, should we sign Conor Gallagher? It's a difficult one because I'm never a fan of uh, signing players from rival clubs. And um, I think there is probably better value for money out there. However, he's English and we've lost Tanganga, we've lost Sessegnon, we're lo lose, set to lose other homegrown players. So I think we need that homegrown, um, homegrown number. His energy and athleticism is fantastic. He'll run and he'll give him all the fight and all the energy for the badge, which is what the manager requires. He's a player the manager's been linked to since the minute he came in. Um, and he's, he's someone who the manager clearly rates and clearly wants. And year upon year, we've asked the club to back the manager. We've asked Andrew Levy to back the manager and bring in who he wants. This is clearly Angie's first choice. So I think we should give him the benefit of the doubt. In my opinion, sign him ideally for less than the 50 million quoted, but I personally would sign him up the Spurs. Yo, this is with Mr. Box Office from Mr. Box Office TV. Back with my, my thoughts on Gallagher. Rumours Gallagher coming to Tottenham. And my thoughts is, I'm not interested. I'm not interested at all. And the reason for this is that we need players that have got quality, that can get you off your seat, and they've got the arrogance and got the mindset to win. Gallagher's proven over last season, even though he had his best season, in the main moments, in the main games, he failed. He failed. He failed in the final, cup final, in the Cowboy Cup, when Chelsea should have won. What did he do? Missed his chance. And he failed in the FA Cup as well. And Chelsea only had one game a week. And that's it. So for me, at the moment, we've got too many nice guys at our club. And Gallagher's just another one of them that's going to be a nice guy and that's it. And that's coming from your boy, your man. Mr. Box Office, the main event, the professor of truth and entertainments, your tr yours truly, the people's champion, and everyone's guilty pleasure in that sit. And if you don't know, get to know. Hi, everyone. Uh, Wes McGraw here. Uh, just wanted um, to give my thoughts on whether Spurs should sign Conor Gallagher or not. Um, I think for me, Conor Gallagher as a player... Um, especially over the last couple of years, has done really, really well at Chelsea, um, despite the fact that things have been really, really uncertain with the club. Obviously, there's been a lot of change with the new owners, a lot of new players coming in, but actually, I think Conor Gallagher comes out of it with a lot of credit. Um, and obviously, I think we saw last season, you know, Pochettino giving him the the armband um, and I think he really took on the, the leadership role at, at Chelsea really really well um, and I think even if Spurs were to get something similar in terms of the Crystal Palace um, Conor Gallagher who really sort of took the lead by storm and did very very well at Palace um, I think it'd be a very very shrewd signing the only thing that would probably concern me would be the price tag um, obviously he's got one year left on his contract at Chelsea so it might then leave a little bit of room for manoeuvre um, I have a feeling the deal is going to be quite complicated as Chelsea probably won't want to you know deal with us or sell to us with us being um, obviously big rivals um, but put it this way for me I think if Colin Gallagher did turn up um, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium then I wouldn't grumble um, it may just be that we would need to have and add somebody else into the mix um, but yeah I think for me Conor Gallagher wouldn't be the worst signing um, that, that Spurs could make this summer um, obviously Cut also comes with a lot of international experience as well which I think will help 
Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts on whether Spurs should sign Connor Gallagher. Good evening. Uh, David here from the Park Lane podcast. Uh, I've been asked to do a quick video on why Tottenham should sign Connor Gallagher. Um, we shouldn't. Simple as that. He's not good enough. There's better options. Plow the money, go and get Eberichi Eze for the same sort of money. Chelsea are going to charge us a fortune because we're Tottenham. Um, so, no, Connor Gallagher, Gallagher, not for me. Go and get someone like Eze. Spend the money that we should spend on the players that we should spend them on Eze and Isaac at the dream window but obviously it's Daniel Levy so that's not likely um, we'll probably end up with a prospect from League 2 or some shit but yeah Gallagher not for me Hello Scarfy Spurs Talk it's Dan from Red Devils TV and Harry's asked me why do I think Spurs should sign what's his name Connor Co- not Connor Cody what's he called Connor Gallagher from Chelsea I mean I feel like Spurs are very short in midfield. Saar, very decent player. But for me, players like Hoiberg and a few other players and even Basuma, I don't think are that good. And I think Conor Gallagher will bring a lot of quality to Spurs. So he's definitely the type of right profile they need, especially with someone like James Madison as well, who's that focus, focal point as being a 10 in that uh, postcard glue side. I feel like he will be very good for the likes of Spurs. But again, I'm not a Spurs fan. I think it'd be a good signing. I don't really personally rate Conor Gallagher. If, if he was linked to United, I wouldn't be too fond. Let me just say that. But I do think he's a good player. But for me, he's just not my type of player. I don't think United typically need him. But we also spend £80 million on Harry Maguire and Antony. So I really can't complain when it comes to transfers. So thank you very much and big shout out to you, Harry Scarf, as well. Um, what do I think of Conor Gallagher potentially being linked to Tottenham? Look, I think for me, when he was at Crystal Palace, he was great at Crystal Palace. Um, he was suiting very well at the football club. He felt very, very comfortable at Crystal Palace. He had a good style of play, was scoring goals. Crystal Palace didn't want to get rid of him. Um, but when he came to Chelsea, he was decent, popped up popped up on the odd occasion but I don't think Tottenham don't need Conor Gallagher as I'm saying as an Arsenal fan I personally don't think Conor Gallagher doesn't is not the right um, suitable midfielder I feel Tottenham can do someone better I know you've got people like Benteke James Madison in midfield but I feel like Tottenham needs someone better than Conor Gallagher but thank you very much for letting me be part of your video mate Winnie from Park Lane Pod here. Um, question whether we should or should not sign Conor Gallagher from Chelsea. Now, it's a bit of a tough one for me because uh, I'll tell you the reason why. Um, first and foremost, I'll tell you, would I be happy at signing Conor Gallagher? Yes, yes, I would. I think what he, what he offers in terms of, you know, just his pure fitness, um, his tenacity to win the ball back, um, and you know, just you know, just just his general energy um, would would be huge for our midfield because I feel like I feel like you know we've got some very talented players, but we just lack someone like that who has that you know just pure raw energy. I think Saar is probably the closest we get to it. Um, but yeah, so on that on that on that grounds, yeah, I would sign him. But the price tag for me would be the one um, that really concerns me. I wouldn't really want to be paying in this market any more than. 50 million for him and even that for me is a bit of a stretch um, but look if we're going to sign him I would be happy um, the reason why I wouldn't want to sign him um, is probably a little bit of a silly one but it's still something that sits deep within me and that is his clear love for Chelsea um, it's happened in the past look we, we've, we've had w- uh, William Gallas sign from Arsenal um, we've had players like that in the past that have come from clubs that we don't probably like and played but but played well for us so I'm sure he could put his like his allegiance aside and, and play well for us if he was to be was to be signed but another reason why I wouldn't is because I'm a huge advocate for Morgan Gibbs White now I know they are different positions really one obviously Morgan Gibbs White is more attacking um, more like a Madders kind of position but I feel like he can also play deeper um, and I I just really, really like Morgan Gibbs White, and I feel like he may be, um, you know, given the fact that Forrest were in a bit of a, a bit of trouble last season, they may look to cash in on him, and he may look to to also jump ship. So, look for me, um, would I be happy with Conor Gallagher? Yes. Um, right now, I think this is a huge window for Tottenham and and Postecoglou. 
Um, and do you know what? Obviously, the recent news, um, you know, from make from when me making this video is that um, Tangi and Dombele uh, were terminating his contract. So maybe this is the the start of something new for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, and you know, this Deadwood that we've been looking to get rid of, maybe it's all going to come together at the right time. So this is a huge window. Um, and do you know what? If we're being touted with names like Conor Gallagher, I'm all for it because he's prem proven. Um, he's about to go off to the Euros um, and, and, and potentially have a, a good little a good little tournament with England, and I think he'll be quite a, quite a spearhead for that. So, would I sign him? Yes, uh, but would I prefer Morgan Gibbs White? Yes. Um, so, hopefully, that answers the question.